Hey guys, this is kind of an interesting problem. Uh, I'm trying to create a properly photo mapped mouse. And a mouse doesn't have flat surfaces that you can use to push and pull. I went on the web and I found a couple pictures of a mouse, this one and this one. And I pasted them together in a rather small resolution file. It's 500 by 400 pixels, so it's actually very small. And I want to create a very low resolution mouse that I can use for scenes, maybe around five, 600 polygons, because there's a lot of surfaces in here. So let's talk about how I'll go about doing that. Okay, first we're in Blender. And as you know, we would always like to use the import images as planes. And we'll go find that picture. And then I'll go to my material view. And as you notice, one's light and one's dark. We want the light one. So I'm going to zoom up in here. And with this light one, I'm going to say rotate on the X. Rx, and as I move it, it tells me what direction I'm moving it in. Minus 37.5, and I'll just go minus 90, and I've got it just where I want it. And now I'm going to move this. Use the 7 key to the top view, 5 to get in orthographic rejection. I'm going to move this directly into the center. And one of the nice things I like about Blender is that I can zoom way in, and I don't need to be able to click on that arrow. I can use the G, X key, and I'm moving it. Now if I hold the Shift key down, I move it a lot slower, which is really nice. So I'll go right to about there and I'll say, okay, that's my center of that image. And then I'll shift D to duplicate it, right click to drop it. And then, now I'm going to rotate it about the Y axis, R, Y, and we'll go here and that's going to be 90. And then what I'm going to do is I'll take this image and I'm going to just push it back here. And in this position, I'll move it up and I'm going to move it up. So it's kind of showing the bottom down here. And so now I've got this kind of set up that I'm going to be using now for creating my model. Okay. Now what we need to do is let's go into this actual material over here, scroll to the bottom and let's turn this alpha blend to opaque. So these are now opaque and I'm going to move this one down a little bit. Actually, I'll go under add and say mesh plane. I can also use shift a mesh plane as well. And I'll tab into that and I'll scale it down a little bit. And then I'll go into my top view and I really want this to be at least as big as the mouse. So I'll kind of do something like this. Now the problem now is, as you can see, is that we can't really see through this. And the way to handle that, I'm gonna create a new material and I'm gonna call it temp because I'm gonna delete it when we're done. And the surface is gonna be a transparent and the transparent color, I'm gonna make it kind of a yellow. And then down here in blend mode, I'll make it alpha blend. And now there we have our Yellow, we can see through it, but we can also use this as a guide. So then I'll tab into this and with this set, I'm going to go to tool and I'll go to options. I'm going to say mirror on the X. And so what that means is as I drag this around, you can see it's mirroring on the X. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to add a few, the loop cut tools over here, but I'm going to use the control R shortcut because that's what I'm used to. So I'll do control R. And as I scroll the mouse, you can see I'm doing more and then I'll click down and I'll move around and that'll actually spread them out a little bit. So I'll go right about there and then I click and I set it. So that's one way to do it. I'm going to try a different way because I do want to have this kind of a nice surface on the edge. So let's take a look at how we'll do that. I'm going to turn this off and save it just in case we need it for later. And I'll take this plane. I'm going to shift D and move it. And then I'm going to make it zero on the X and I will say control A and I want to lock in the rotation and I'll make this a temp material and I'll go into this view and let's put it uh, zero on the Y. And I'll tab into this and then I'll tab out of this and I'll go and add a modifier and we'll do the same thing. Subdivision surface, one in the viewport tab and I want to create maybe two. We'll start off with two here. Control R. Start off with four here. Okay, so we're still just in a plane. And what I'm going to do is you can see the yellow surface represents the actual, turn this up a little bit, the actual shape. 
So I want to create the edge loops right in this area. So I'm going to come in here, X those vertices, and X these vertices. And I'll take this and say G, and I'll move it down to like this. G, move it up. G, move it over here. And G, move this over here. So we're, And then I will take my edge tool, and I'll grab this this and this and I am going to say extrude edges and I'm going to move them up like this so now what we're doing is we're creating this new edge geometry if I go into my temp I can actually go in here and make it darker and I can actually see exactly what that shape is looking like. Just so we're clear. Let's make it just a little bit darker here. I'm going to go to the top view and I'm going to select all three for polygon select all. And I'm going to extrude to one side. And I think I'm going to do three extrusions. One, two, three. Let's select all mesh symmetrize. And I want to go from the positive X to the negative X, which is right here. And now we have all of them set up. If I go down, we should be, yep, yeah, that looks pretty good. Over here in our tool options, we want to be mirroring across the X. I'm going to use proportional editing. So if I hit the G button, we'll see that G, you can see how big that circle is. So if I hit the G and basically zoom way in, Let's just select these. I'll select G and then Z, and then I'll move this down just a little bit. And what you can see what I'm doing is I'm using proportional editing, which is this button up here. And I'll turn it off, and I think I'll just move it down just a little more. Whoops. To kind of get that a little bit of a sharper edge on that. And I think we're getting kind of close. We need to get this rounded back here, but we'll get that from the top. So I think, let's take a look at what this looks like from the top here. Okay, so now we have our final shape here. And you can see we have this line going through here. And the reason for that is there's an actual internal face in there. And so one of the ways to get rid of that is let's go to face mode, select it and say under select, we'll say uh, unselect everything and under select, let's say select all by trait interior faces right there, hit the X button and faces and it's gone. And then we can tab out of this. And again, we have this temp plastic, there it is, right click and say shade smooth. And let's look at our other version of this which was this one and we'll move it out and i think you can see that it's a little this one this one's a little better but this one's actually quite a bit more it's five thousand or three thousand faces so if i go in here and we'll knock down the viewport one and now we're at about a thousand faces but still it's quite a bit nicer than this right here so i think that little experiment paid off we'll delete that and We'll move on to the next phase, which is going to be adding the photo maps to this. So now we're ready to photo map. By the way, I added a little bit more of a rounded edge to that back end here, uh, as well as the sides to make sure that we would photo map correctly. So when we project down from this, we're going to get a, a good look. Go to UV editing, five key to turn off perspective, seven key to go in the top view. And then, uh, and then we'll look at our object there. And what we want to do here is we're going to select all of our polygons before we apply the subdivision surface. So don't forget we have a subdivision surface over here. Let's select our mouse image. And with these all selected, I'm going to say U project from view. And I can also go up here and say U project from view. Either one works, right? So there we have it. And these are our basic polygons. And so what I'm going to do is I'll Hit A over here, 
I'm going to hit the control space bar so I can go full screen. G will move it just like in our regular. And I'll, I'll kind of center it. And then uh, S, X will scale it on the X axis. So we'll get it about right there. S, Y scales it on the Y axis, something around there. And then G, Y will move it up. And we're actually pretty close to what we want. Now with this set like this, I'm going to hit the control space bar to get back out of there. And over here, I'm going to, let me close this so I can show you what I want to do. So I'll hit this little show overlays button and so I can see this. Now, as you can see, there's nothing to show right now. And that's because we haven't applied the right texture to this mouse. So what I'll do is tab out of this materials instead of temp plastic for this mouse. Let's go back in and turn on our overlays for this. Instead of temp plastic, let's go ahead and use the Lenovo mouse. And now we're starting to see what it looks like. Let's also take this, hit the H button to hide it so we don't see that. So now here's this being projected on here. And as we can see over here, if I hit tab and then go up here again and show overlays, I have that mapped to a key here. So I just turn off show overlays. So now I can look at this and I can kind of see what's going on here. Oh, tab, hide that. Hey, edit mode. So I can kind of see what's going on and see if there's any kind of mess up. And see this little white right here? That must be down in this area right here. You can see that little white. So I'm going to select this and this and hit the G key and move them inside. Now that white is gone. I'm not going to worry about the bottom. I've got some white over here. So let's go over here and look at over here. See where that's coming from. It's probably these guys here. Hit the G key. We'll kind of move those in. And move, move these in too. Get rid of that white. Okay, so now we've got this photo map. Now the next thing I want to do is I'm going to add this side piece and I'm going to add the button. So let's do that next. So first let's add the side parting line and I'm going to turn that side view on. So I'm going to basically hide my mouse because we know that it's mapped pretty much exactly to the side of this. So I'll hit the H button for hide and then I'm going to take this plane and shift the X and move it up just a little bit. Let me tell you why I did this. If I were to go in here and start to try and draw inside this plane, this surface, let's, let's do that real quick. I'm going to grab a vertice over here, hit E for extrude Y to move it over here, 2 to grab that edge, E to extrude, drop it down in the Z direction. And we can see that uh, I have just basically obliterated my view on this particular plane. I will grab a vertice, Shift E to duplicate it. I'm going to drop it right here on this and just say E and I'm just going to move this. Now that I have this done, I will fill it in E down to here and then L to select all those and then F to make a face out of that. Okay, so that looks pretty good right now the way that is. I will tab out of that and move it out here. And then I'm going to tab back in and I'm going to hit this three button and delete that face and just leave this object. Tab. We'll hide this. We'll go back in and turn our mouse back on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to project this line so it'll cut all the way through here. And that's the goal. So I'll hit the button, select this, select this secondly, tab into them. AA to deselect everything. One select, just select the part that we're going to use for the cutter. Now we're going to go into the view that we want to project from. We'll go mesh and we will say knife project. Notice that we get this error. No other selected objects have wire or boundary edges to use for projection. I'm not exactly sure why that doesn't work, but I do know how to fix it. So I'm going to go tab back into the tab and I'll go in here. And what I'll do is I will sit tab into this and hit the I button and I'll just insert this. By the way, we're also going to, before we add this, we're going to screw up our subdivision surface if we do add it. So let's go ahead and apply that. Now that that's applied, and I want to look and I want to look at my surface. I've got stretching here, and I've got some stretching on the back, also right in this area. So I think what I'm going to do is tab back in, select all of this again, and I think I'm going to move some of this over. So I'll just drag this 
oops, tab, tab in here, drag that, and I think I'm going to move it over a little bit, just a little bit, like, like this, maybe move this up, something like that, you can see the stretching in the background, so I can kind of move all this over to get rid of that stretching, so I'll move this up. Once I've done this offset, what I want to do is hit the three key and let's just delete this face. Now with this face deleted, tab back out, and this is going to be our knife project object, and we're going to project it on the mouse. So we select this first and select the mouse second, and then we'll go to the view that we want to project from and tab into it. Make sure we select the parts that we want to use to be the projection. Then we're just going to mesh, knife project, and as you can see, we have only part of the way through. So I'll hit this button that says cut through. Let's do it again. Mesh, knife project. And with cut through, we get exactly what we want. I'm gonna tab back out of this, hit this, hit the, hit the H button, hide it, and go back into our object. And with this selected, I'm gonna hit the P key and say separate by selection. I'm gonna call this the temp parting line because I'm going to move that back in at some point. But I'm doing that because I want to be able to select some other things easier. Okay, so now that we've done that, the next step is to take this temp parting line and we're going to go into the UV editing view and I'll show my overlays, zoom out, and I want to make this thing black. So let's take a look at what our surface is. So you can see that with our temp parting line, we have this gray surface right here. And if I hit A and select them all, that's what they are right there. Now, if I were to only map them in this way, then I'm going to possibly miss mapping those front ones. I don't really care about the bottom ones. But so let's take and let's hit the numpad six key one time. Now I'm going to get those those in this area. So if I didn't do that, I wouldn't get those. But if I hit the six key, now I'll have all of these. And so now I'll say you project from view. There we have it. So I'm going to take this and hit A, select them all, S for scale, scale them way down. I'm going to rotate them like this way, hit the G button and drop them down here, kind of in the dark area. And if I go over here and say show overlays, you'll see I've got it pretty dark now. Now I've got this kind of problem with this glare and that's a material issue. So if I go in here, lift this up and say give me my shader editor and we'll grab this out and we'll remove our alpha and then if i just make this a little more rough and drop the specular down i'll get it but i may still not be good enough for a parting line so the best thing to do in that case is to up here where it's selected let's go back in and show our overlays with it selected tab out of there i'm going to duplicate it that's what this button does here and we can also use the same button right here and i will name that dash parting line. So now we have a different object and I'll go back in here and say Q show overlays. Let's get an area we know. Yeah, there you go. So that's looking a little bright. Come back in here and take the roughness and jack it all the way forward and then take the specular and jack it all the way back. And now we're going to get a nice dark line. Actually, let's move it just a little bit up for the specular. But now we're in pretty good shape. So now we have something that kind of matches what's going on up here. And that's good. Okay, so now we have two more areas that we need to map. One is this side area, and the other is this front stretchy area. And we'll show you how do you do those. So first, let's start with the side area. I'm going to tab and select this. And because I cut that apart, it's going to be easy for me to select this uh, bottom part. I'll, I can go under Select, Linked, and I'll get all of them. And so, so I'm going to take this. I will go into the UV editing space. Again, we're going to do the same thing where I hit the numpad six key one time so I can get around the front and everything. And then I'll just hit the U and project from view. Come over here, hit A, R, rotate, and then hold the control key down and that'll snap. And then I just need to say S for scale, Y for direction, minus one return and that'll get us there and over here I'm going to say Q show overlay so I can see what's going on as you can see as I drag this around there we're in a white area now 
but I want to put it over here and as I drag it in we still are not quite right so let's scale this in the Y direction and then G and move it around a little bit and now we've got it looking exactly as we like so that's good now the last thing we need to do is get this front area and that's going to use a different kind of technique let's talk about that so shore overlays and what I'm going to need to do is figure out which of those polygons need to be selected and I think if we look at them I think it's going to be here and all the way over to here so if I control shift How do I save these polygons uh, or these faces? One way of doing it kind of quickly is you just say, give me a new material. And we'll use the exact same material, the Lenovo mouse material, and we assign it. And so now if I want to, I can just go over here and say, select this and say select and I'll always get those. With that being selected, I'm gonna go directly in the front view like this and I'm gonna type in U and project from view and here they are over here and that's what they look like and over here again I'll go Q show overlays I want to see what's going on a and let's zoom in on this G we'll put this right smack dag in the middle well, I'm gonna actually rotate it 180 degrees G Y so as I move up you'll see that that's the tip of it that's why I want that rotated so that I'm making sure that I'm getting the right orientation Okay, so with this set, I'll need to zoom in here and say scale X. And I want to scale it so it just pretty much matches exactly. Scale Y, S, Y. We're going to move that down and up so I can kind of get. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for that kind of a match here. I got a slight little line there, but I don't think it's going to be a big deal. And now I just need to basically select all these verts and all these verts. And I'm going to just remap those. So again, GY. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I think it'll look even better when we start adding a little bit more geometry up in here. So, okay, we're just about finished now. What I'm going to do next is I'll take this plane right here and I am going to move it above our mouse like this and then I'm going to make it a tip and now that we have that done I can actually draw on this plane so I'm just going to basically create some little pieces I'll hit the tab scale this down and G move it over here something like this and I'm going to make that little bullet shape right there so so I'll grab my I'm going to put it I'm going to actually put this a little bit inside the red because I want that, that wheel to always be red. So I'll move this just a tiny bit inside the red. And with these all selected, I'll control shift B, which bevels the vertices. So you can see that we'll get right to the point where they almost cross and then I'll start scrolling the wheel. I'll probably do it maybe, yeah, maybe that many times right there. So I'll make it so they almost cross. And then I'll just select these vertices and hit M at center, M at center. So that gives me my bullet shape. I'll take this and I will shift D it and scale it just like that. So that looks pretty good. That's going to be our projection object. So tab out of it. Okay, we're going to knife project. So I'll select my projection and then select the mouse. And we'll tab into it and then we'll select only the knife project part and we'll go up here mesh knife project and we don't have cut through and I'm just going to do that much tab out of it hide that object and let's go into this object and with this selected I'm just going to say alt E extrude faces along normals and just pull that down just like about there okay and then now I can grab this surface and with the one key I can just start let's just go ahead and grab a couple of these and hit the J to as Jerry likes to call it lightning bolt them ok 
Okay, now if he's there, I'm just going to this view and just move him up a little bit, like so. And there is our button. Now, I want to make the button a little brighter and a little more uh, plasticky. So I'm going to go in here with three and just select a few of these top faces and then control plus to get the rest of them. And I am going to create a new material and that's going to be called the Lenovo mouse. And then I'm going to duplicate it and call it Lenovo mouse. We need to assign that material. There we go. Now it's quite a bit shinier. So let's add a little more roughness to that. But it's still a little shinier than the rest of it. And, and speaking of the rest of it, we'll go to the regular mouse material, right, which is this right here. And we will make this just a little less roughness. There's something like that. And if I want, a lot of times an RGB color shader will be nice if you just dip it down just a little bit. Well, let's go ahead and take the temporary parting line and let's join it with this. Control J and now we need to reassign the material so I'll tab into it. It's selected. Let's take the mouse button, deselect it and assign the parting line and that should make it look about right. Yeah it does. And then we have an extra Lenovo mouse and so I can just go in here and tab out of this and delete that. Let's go into our tool and our origins and GZ this all the way down there. I want it just floating a little bit off the ground, something like that. Turn that off. Shift S, snap selection cursor. There we have it. Okay, now we're in pretty good shape. And you can see we do have some tiny shading artifacts and we can auto smooth this a little bit, which might help us. Let's see what that does. Here you go. That looks a little better. Yeah. And we set it up. And lastly, what we want to do is we want to actually set it to the right scale item. So we know that this is 2.4 inches in the Y direction. And so we'll go in here, 2.4 shift inch, return. And now we need to adjust the scale. So I'm going to control C here, control V, control V, period. And there we have it. And of course, what we're going to want to do next is under object, we want to say apply scale. So we're now at one to one. So I mentioned one last thing I did is I went in, I selected these bottom faces and marked them sharp to help with the curvature and shading anomalies. And then I went into UV editing and I made them all black, very dark. I just scaled them way down and made them black. And then I came in here and I still have some of this weirdness going on, even though I have those sharp. And I go in and I just say add modifier, weighted normal, and just apply that. And now it's pretty much done and looks great. And that's really a tutorial on how to create a mouse uh, kind of in a regular shape using some photo textures. I think you can see it worked out pretty well. Uh, hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you online.